Wabin can be summed up as everything you would want in a Warframe and more. You want CC? Wabin has it. You want damage? Wabin got that too. Survivability? Wabin got you covered. What's that? You need damage buffs? You guessed it. Wabin has it. Before I move on, let me make something clear. I won't be repeating the scaling of this or that all the time in the video. Instead, whenever I say something that is scaling, I will say what it's scaling up at the top of the screen. Like so. Let's talk passive. Any enemy CC'd will receive 25% extra damage from Wabin. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> move on. First ability, Tesla Nervos. The best way I can describe it is just passive CC. You press 1 to drop 1 of them, or hold 1 to drop 4 of them for the same energy cost. They latch on enemies and cause AoE electricity procs in a 6 meter range, with 50% chance to stun enemies. While the target they are latched to is perma stunned, the nervos don't take damage, and don't die until they have used all of their charges. They also don't care what you're doing, they do their own thing, so you might want to recast the ability every now and then. With its augment, it can AoE insta-kill anything without armor in an 8 meter radius. And no, I'm not exaggerating, it's literally an instant death. Watch. It's a good mod to take corpus missions. Second ability, Mine Layer. This one ability is so good. You could make a warframe with these four on its abilities and it wouldn't be a bad frame. There is four different mines and all of them have a 25 second base duration and you can have up to four of each active at a time. So that's four overrides, four flechette orbs, four tethers and four vector pads. Override gives you 25% damage buff. It can latch to you, allies, pets and tesla nervos. Editing Sikto here. You can't refresh overrides buff. You have to wait till it runs out, then you can cast it again. Flechette Orb It's goddamn overpowered. It does 300 puncture damage on base, it has 50% crit chance with 2 times multiplier, and its damage scales with enemy level. At level 145, with my 110% ability strength, if you have an override on yourself and the target is CC'd by you, it deals, are you ready for this? 7870 damage. Oh wait, there's more. That's before the 50% crit chance. And if it crits, that'll be over 15k. And this is per nail. You might be thinking, okay, it does a lot of damage. But what's the point when it shoots at random directions? You're not gonna hit anything. And that's where you're wrong. It doesn't shoot nails at random direction. It's actually a pinpoint accurate turret. And yes, I said it. It's a turret. It has a 10 meter targeting range. Watch this and see if you call it shooting at random directions. Agreed, some of its shots are random, but if we only count the accurate ones, it has about 2.5 nail hits per second. And if we count on my build with Wobbin buffs active, you'll deal 30,000 damage per second with one orb that lasts almost a minute and only costs 25 energy. Stack four of them and you get 120k damage per second. Tether Coil It grabs two enemies from 20 meter range. After you kill them, it grabs more. You basically use it to increase the range of your last deal or get enemies into flesh at orbs range. Editing Sikto here, again. Just wanted to mention that tethered enemies are open to ground finishers. It's not that big a deal or anything. Or is it? Vectopad. Yeah, it's a thing. Moving on. Third ability is Photon Strike. 5 meter radius AoE 1 burst scaling damage. It's a fun ability and all, but it's not all that useful per se. Because it's one burst of damage, it has no lingering effect, no synergy with other parts of the kit. Damage is okay, but it suffers because it's so low range. You could use 75 energy to do this, or you could just... Yeah, you get my point. Fourth ability, Bastille and Vortex. Both has 10 meter radius and 15 second duration. 
Bastille grabs 12 enemies at base and reduces 10% of the armor per second. You will get 8 armor per second per enemy caught. On my build with the cap 13 enemies caught, you will get your 1k armor in 8.7 seconds. The extra armor you get can be refreshed by entering any Bastille, doesn't matter if it has enemies in it or not. Bastille's armor buff is your main survivability tool and essentially gives you 80% damage reduction. Vortex grabs all enemies and causes magnetic frost. Guess who it is? If you just press 4 you will drop a Bastille, if you hold 4 you will drop a Vortex and when Bastille is active holding 4 will turn all Bastilles into one Vortex. Ahem, me again? Bastille has this augment. It's a good augment if you only plan to CC and not use any of your other tools. It can be useful for stuff like interception. It will let you completely forgo strength and mod for max duration and range. You can also do this. If you let a Bastille automatically turn into a Vortex, it'll have a 3 second duration. But if you turn it into a Vortex manually, it'll have the full duration, even if it only had a few seconds left. But this has a downside too. All of your Bastilles made Vortex will be sucked towards the first drop, reducing your coverage. But this is only for Bastilles that you turn into Vortex. If you just drop a Vortex, it's not affected by any of the others. Editing Sector here, again for like the 10th time, this imbecile has memory of a fish, I have to do so much more work because he is such a... <sighs> okay, the build, this is the build, the build's focus is on duration and range, you just don't want to go below 100% strength because that'll make your damage slash armor strip slash buffing power too weak, that's all I had to say, now if you excuse me, I got stuck.